In today's video, I wanted to take a little bit of time here to bring some information to you guys as well as give my overall thoughts and opinions on this information. I do think that it is pretty significant because we know that PlayStation has been relatively quiet this year and some of the executives as well. They've been pretty quiet about what their plans are going into next generation. Now we do have some information that we've gotten over the months, but today we have a new piece of information that comes from PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan that honestly gives me, as a PlayStation fan, as a gamer, a lot of reassurance going into next generation with the PlayStation 5. He talks about how basically they want to avoid complacency, which is something that I think everybody can get behind, and I think we can all agree that that is good to hear. And there's also another piece of information that I think was kind of a little bit under the radar, but is certainly worth mentioning here that has to do with PS4 crossplay. We know that it was in beta for a while now, and apparently it has left beta form, so now any developer in any game can utilize it. So this is the info we're going to be going over in this video. Let's get started here talking about Jim Ryan and what he had to say about going into the next generation. It says, as PS5 gets closer, you can't help but wonder, is Sony going to hold strong to the sales lead it developed this generation, or is it going to mess it all up? It's far too early to tell at this point, but at least we know it's a concern that Sony shares. The track record of the incumbent platform winning the next time around is not a great one, Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO Jim Ryan told Wired in a new interview. So the major thrust of my executive energy is to avoid complacency. Jim Ryan has more or less summed up the history of the console wars with that observation. The last time the same company led two generations in a row was going from PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 2. After that, the Wii handedly outsold both PS3 and Xbox 360, but then the Wii U was hardly a drop in the bucket next to Xbox One and PS4. The back and forth has helped keep the competition strong within the games industry, and I'd argue much more interesting than the alternative, but obviously Ryan would prefer if PlayStation remained comfortably at the top of the sales charts at all times. So this is actually, even though it's not a whole lot he's saying here and he is being somewhat vague, I think it's incredibly important to pay close attention to what exactly Jim Ryan is saying because I think it does give us a pretty good idea of the mindset that not only he has as the PlayStation CEO, but obviously because of that, everybody else around him is going to have that same mindset as well when working as a team and the mindset is they do not want to lose their their top spot going into next generation many of us you know kind of whether it's joking around or not say that playstation 5 already won next generation and of course it's easy to say that looking at the momentum they have going into next generation but we do need to understand that companies do have a tendency to make major mistakes when they become complacent and more often than not you'll find that a company and the people running a company can become complacent when things are going their way and they believe that they don't have much competition so that's why it's really nice and reassuring for me to hear jim ryan saying this because when you look back at the playstation 3 uh, launch i think we can all agree and safely say that that was probably the lowest point in PlayStation history where you could just tell that Sony looked around while they're on top of the hill and decided that there's no competition and rather than looking below them to see who might be coming to knock them off the top they just said we're untouchable we can pretty much do what we want and they learned the hard way they learned a hard lesson just like most other companies have in this industry or hardware manufacturers they learn the hard lesson that once you become complacent once you become arrogant and once you believe that you have no competition that's when the competition immediately knocks you off the hill we've seen it happen to not just sony but microsoft and nintendo as well and so it's really really good to hear that jim ryan understands that this is something that will be difficult for them to achieve again as much as we want to say that the ps5 is going to dominate next generation it might but it might not one thing we need to understand is that the competition this time around going into the uh, PlayStation 5 and Project Scarlet and you know Google Stadia entering the mix there's gonna be a lot more competition 
And I think Sony honestly has been doing a really good job, obviously, this generation, and they've been making some significant changes that I think are worth highlighting, like not just cross-play like we're going to talk about, but I think they've been doing a better job with PlayStation Plus and their offerings. We know that people have not really been 100% satisfied with that, and so I think we can all agree that recently they've been doing a better job there. They've been trying to do things that we've been asking for. We know that they finally implemented name changes, and I'm not saying that that's you know, something we really need to cheer them on about because that's something that should have been done a long time ago. But the point is they are cleaning up. They are tightening things up. They are making sure that they're listening and trying to be more in tune with the consumer. And the most important thing, as we talk about very frequently on this channel that they've done, is they've done a really good job in bringing out really great games and ensuring that the quality is there, ensuring that they're not abandoning single player in favor of, you know, pushing out games with terrible monetization schemes that are just not good you know what I mean this is all stuff that Sony's been doing really well and we know that they're going to be putting a heavier emphasis going forward onto PlayStation now and I don't really have a problem with that as long as they continue to double down on what it is that has attracted their core audience it's very obvious in my opinion that Sony is attempting to cover all of their bases and that is the smartest thing they can do to ensure that come next generation with the PlayStation 5 they don't become arrogant or become complacent and risk getting knocked off the hill I as a PlayStation fan would love to see Sony remain on top but I would also love to see some serious competition right obviously I would love to see that competition come from Xbox when it comes to games and the games that they're offering more than anything I think when it comes to the console side of things the competition will be there but in the end we all know that the determining factor is which games are on offer at least for me can't speak for everybody but again really good news coming out of Jim Ryan I know that Jim Ryan gets a little bit of flack and people kind of make fun of him a little bit because he said maybe some very obtuse things in the past but there's a reason why he is in the position that he's in and hopefully he's the right guy we know that Sean Layden recently departed abruptly we do not know why this has happened there are some rumors uh, floating around but in the end I think that this is something worth celebrating and pointing out that this is good this is what we want to hear from Sony do not believe that just because you're the top dog now you're gonna be the top dog tomorrow or the day after you always have to be on top that's why being on top is so difficult because you always have to be ready to evolve and adapt and you know listen to what people are telling you so Moving on from that, we're going to end this video talking about Sony's PS4 cross-play program and how it has reportedly moved out of beta. It says that Sony has been criticized for its tough stance on cross-console compatibility, initially giving developers and players looking for the functionality a hard no. Of course, more recently, the platform holder has softened on the issue. Last year, the company announced a major policy change with regards to cross-play, stating it would be trialing the service in beta form with Fortnite. Over the last 12 months or so, the beta has remained in place, as far as we know, and a handful of other games have been allowed to bring crossplay to PS4. Now it seems that Sony's beta stage of crossplay is officially over. A new report from Wired says PS4's crossplay beta has come to an end while it's not announcing the news explicitly. The PS4's crossplay efforts have officially moved out of the beta stage, meaning that the console can support crossplay on any titles that studios provide the functionality for. So it, this is honestly some really good news. I've always been an advocate for crossplay. I've always thought it was a great thing. Just recently, as somebody who still from time to time plays PUBG, I noticed that PUBG implemented crossplay between Xbox users and PlayStation users, which is awesome because I would notice that one of the reasons I wouldn't play PUBG as often is because I would have a hard time at certain times of the day whenever I'm trying to play it and get the chance to play it, getting into lobbies and getting rooms and the queue times would just be way too long and I'm just like forget it I'll go play something else but ever since they did this I noticed I'm just immediately getting into games and it's also a little bit fun to see that I'm you know killing in PUBG Xbox players are taking them out or you know Xbox players taking me out it's just I don't know it, it really adds this whole dynamic I think to a multiplayer or co-op game that just wasn't there before uh, not just in terms of friendly competition, but just making it a better experience overall. It's just a really good thing for multiplayer games. This way you always have a larger player pool when it comes to matchmaking. Uh, just recently with the Call of Duty Modern Warfare beta, I thought that they did a great job with crossplay there. It was really interesting to see just how... <laughs> 
For anybody who may have played, I'm sure you noticed most people were utilizing crossplay, and it was weird because it kind of brought us back to the older days when not everybody was in a party chatting privately, but you could hear everybody, and obviously it can be a little bit or maybe really toxic in that case, but it's also just really entertaining, and I think that they did a pretty good job with it. Um, obviously, the mic quality is not going to be as good when you're utilizing crossplay and using in-game chat, but the fact that it is a thing, the fact it can be done, the fact you can actually party up, you know, speaking to Call of Duty here with Xbox players if you're playing on PlayStation is an awesome thing, and I hope to see more and more developers utilize this going forward. I'm sure they're going to now that Sony is opening the floodgates and allowing any developer with any game that offers multiplayer co-op the ability to take advantage of this. So that's going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you did find it helpful or informative. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, be sure to leave the video a like. It really helps it out. Let's me know you guys are enjoying the content. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. And feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.